Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I note that the hour has come that a quorum of this council is present. Council will now come to order. Members will please take their seats. Visitors will retire to the seats outside the rails. I will all ask, also ask the members to please keep your voices to a minimum. Before proceeding, I will ask all those present to please set your cell phones to silent or vibrate. Thank you. To give our invocation this morning, To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes Father James Callahan of the mighty Archbishop Ryan High School. He is here today as guest of Councilmember Brian O'Neill. I will ask all members and guests to please rise. I'm privileged to be here today, a citizen of Philadelphia all my life offer our prayer. I begin the prayer with a, an old Irish fable. There's a story about a, an ancient king who was on his last legs and he called his three sons to meet with him and asked them to help, uh, help him shorten his road. And the one son uh, stepped up and said, I'll, I'll buy all the, the fastest horses in the land and attach them to your coach and shorten the road for you, Dad. Second son came up and said, I'll cut down all the trees in the forest, and I'll straighten the road, I'll shorten the road for you. And finally, his youngest son came up to him and said, Dad, I'll sit next to you in the coach, and we'll tell stories. I offer prayer today and pray that the members of this council might listen to the stories of the people of Philadelphia, all the people of Philadelphia, the young, the old, the men, the women, the black, the white, Hispanic, Asian. Listen to their stories. And as the leaders of the people of Philadelphia, may they not only listen to the stories, but may the stories help them, help them to shorten the road for us, shorten the road for us all. And we ask the Lord to bless them, bless us, and all they say and do. We ask this in the Lord's name. Amen. The chair thanks the pastor for his invocation. Council will be at ease. The next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, March the 21st of 2024. The chair recognizes Council Member Cindy Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, March 21st, 2024 be approved. It has been moved and properly seconded that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, March the 21st, 21st of 2024 stand approved. All those in favor will signify by saying aye, aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it and the journal is approved.
The next order of business is, is request for leave of absences, and the chair recognizes Councilmember Catherine Gilmore Richardson. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the majority, there are no requests for leave of absence today. Thank you very much. The chair recognizes Councilmember Kendra Brooks. Good morning, Council President. On behalf of the minority, there are no uh, leaves of absence for today. Thank you very much. The chair now recognizes Councilmember Gilmore Richardson for a motion concerning certain matters that may arise during the course of today's session of council and that were not listed on the calendar circulated prior to today's session. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that any of the following matters, if considered today, may be added to the agenda for this session of council and as required by law, subsequently published on an amended agenda after the consideration of those matters. Resolutions authorizing hearings. Excuse me. Uh, member, uh, I just want to ask, if you're going to be in the chambers today, could you please keep your conversation to a minimum or please step outside the chambers as we conduct the business today? The chair recognizes Council Member Captain Gilmore Richardson. Thank you, Council President. I will continue. Amendments to bills on first reading, the reconsideration of a bill vetoed by or recalled from the mayor, amendments to bills recalled from the mayor, Resolutions taking substantive action to be voted on in this session, a motion to withdraw a bill or resolution that is not on the calendar, and a motion placing a bill or resolution on or returning a bill or resolution from the suspension calendar that is not listed on today's calendar. The purpose of this motion is to provide the public with notice concerning possible actions by council that arose too late to be included on the calendar that was published prior to today's session. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the legislative matters stated by Councilmember Gilmore Richardson may be added to the agenda for today should those matters arise during the course of this session of council. All those in favor will signify by saying aye, aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the motion carries. The chair will dispense with the regular order of business to recognize the guests and visitors joining us in the chambers this morning. On behalf of all members of city council, we welcome you to our council session. We appreciate your taking the time to join us as we attend to the legislative affairs of our city. We certainly invite you to come again. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilmember Jones, who will present a resolution honoring Dr. Joe L. Mojerman Mo for her leadership as the first female and first black chief executive officer and president of the Philadelphia Zoo. With Dr. Joe L. Mojerman and those accompanying her, please join the council member at the podium. And she also brought a guest with her as well. <laughs> Joining Councilmember Jones at the podium is Councilmember. <laughs> Glad I'm up here. <laughs> Joining Councilmember Jones is Councilmember Jamie Gardier, Councilmember Isaiah Thomas, Councilmember Mike Driscoll, Councilmember Kathy Gilmore Richardson, Councilmember Katie Lazada, Councilmember Ru Landau, Councilmember Jim Harity and Councilmember Nicholas Nick O'Rourke. Councilmember Jones, the podium is yours. Mr. President, we also have Rojo joining us in chambers today, which is the mascot brought today uh, to represent the zoo. Um, I represent the zoo only in the parking lot across the street. <laughs> Uh, my colleague, Jamie Gardier, represents the rest of the acreage <laughs> over there. But she gave me permission some time ago to uh, take a tour of the zoo, and I rediscovered it. I rediscovered it. They have, it's not our grandparents' zoo. Uh, it is a zoo where it is more uh, interactive, it is more um, pr 
prolific in its presentation of animal life, both plants, um, mammals, reptiles, and also it has a biosphere that incorporates plants, uh, and it's amazing. And it is actually a cheap date. Uh, take your kid, well, not so cheap, but, but really good. Um, but what we're here today is to recognize that we attracted Philadelphia some talent from St. Louis. We were able to show our best side, and Dr. took on the undertaking of moving the needle forward for the zoo. When I did the tour, she pointed out what the goals and objectives were. This, the certifications, see I remember, some of the certifications that she wanted to maintain so that we are a first class institution in Philadelphia that is not just in the third district, but a national and international attraction. I would also finally say that Philadelphia is full of firsts, and the zoo is one of them. We were the first zoo in the nation and we still hold a very high standard as zoos and animal habitats go. Therefore, Recognizing and honoring Dr. Joelle Mogerman for her leadership as the first female and first black chief executive officer and president of the Philadelphia Zoo. Whereas Dr. Joelle Mogerman has made history by becoming the first woman and the first black chief executive officer and president of the nation's oldest zoo, the Philadelphia Zoo, and Whereas Dr. Morgerman, who assumed the role on October 30th, 2023, brings a wealth of experience and a clear commitment to the community, animal welfare, staff development, and operational excellence, making her the ideal president for the Philadelphia Zoo. And? And whereas Dr. Mogerman, leadership and vision have been evident throughout her esteemed career, including her role as director of the St. Louis Zoo, Wild Care Park, whereas she oversaw the planning and development of $230 million wildlife project and... Whereas Dr. Mogerman's dedication to cons conservation, community engagement, and operational excellence aligns perfectly with the values and the mission of the Philadelphia Zoo, which has been a pioneer in wildlife conservation and community involvement since its establishment in 1874 and... Whereas Dr. Mogerman's appointment marks a significant milestone in the history of zoo leadership, exemplifying progress towards greater diversity and inclusion in leadership positions within the zoo and aquarium fields, and... Whereas Dr. Mogerman's management style, characterized by inspiring her team, setting visions, and capitalizing on strengths, will undoubtedly propel the Philadelphia Zoo into a model for zoos of the future. Now, therefore, be it... Therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that it hereby recognizes and honors Dr. Joelle Mogerman for her leadership as the first female and first black chief executive officer and president of the Philadelphia Zoo. Further resolved that an engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to Dr. Joelle Mogerman as a sign of the admiration and respect of this legislative body. <laughs> The chair recognizes Dr. Mogerman for remarks. Well, well, thank you all. Thank you all very much. Um, this, is, this is quite an honor, and we woke her up. She was sleeping. Um, but the reason why I brought her is because fundamentally people can't be what they can't see, right? And so I'm happy and honored uh, to be here to be the steward of the nation's oldest zoo. 
um, and to, to really sort of demonstrate the power of animals in our lives. There's so much that animals and nature have to teach us, and I'm really excited uh, to be heading up the zoo and to work with all of you because nature and wildlife and animals can be a solution to our problems. So as a conservationist, I fundamentally fundamentally believe that conservation can be a platform for social good. I'm looking forward to working with all of you uh, to make Philadelphia a better city um, and to make sure that the nation's oldest zoo is that leading edge zoo. Um, and we have some work to do, but we will get there and we'll get there together and we'll uplift uh, the city in the process. So I'm super excited and just the budget. Yes, yeah, the yeah, budget. <laughs> Supporting the budget would be awesome. Um, and just a little bit, some of you may not like snakes, but this is really cool. She's a boa constrictor, so she's squeezing on my arm. She just woke up. She was smelling you for a moment. Um, but, but these are, she was in the spotlight a couple of years ago um, because she is, uh, she gave birth to a baby snake but was never around a male. And some snake species can do that. Yeah, so uh, she gave birth to a little snake, so she's famous. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing famousness to, to, the, um, to the council today. So I really do thank you all. Um, I'm privileged to be working and honored to be working with you all. And again, um, Philadelphia Zoo is the nation's oldest zoo, um, and we will make it the best zoo for Philadelphia and for the world, so thank you. Council will now be at ease. The next order of business is communications. The chair requests that the sergeant at arm deliver the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk. The chief clerk will read the messages from the mayor and any other communications in her possession. To the president and members of the council of the city of Philadelphia, pursuant to sections 4-604 and 2-307 of the home rule charter, I am today transmitting to the council the recommendation of the city planning commission on the following bills. Bill number 240020, not for approval. 240058, not for approval. 240119, 240121, 240122, 240159, 240177, 240178, for approval. I am transmitting for the consideration of your honorable body a resolution confirming the reappointment of Reginald Streeter to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. A resolution confirming the reappointment of Sarah Ashley Andrews to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. Confirming the reappointment of Chow Wing Lam to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. 
confirming the reappointment of Joyce Wilkerson to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia, confirming the appointment of Crystal Cubbage to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia, confirming the appointment of Wanda Novalis to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia, confirming the appointment of Cheryl, Cheryl Harper to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia, confirming the appointment of Whitney Jones to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia, confirming the appointment of Joan Stern to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. To the President and members of the Council of City of Philadelphia, I'm a, I am pleased to advise you that on April 3rd, 2024, I signed the following bills, which were passed by Council at its session on March 14th, 2024. Bill number 240014 and Bill number 240016. I am pleased to advise you that on April 3rd, 2024, I signed the following bills, which were passed by Council at a session on March 21st, 2024. Bill number 240010-A, 24008, 24009, 24011, 24089 A, and 24013-A. Council President, there are no other communications in my possession. Thank you. The messages will be printed in the journal. The next order of business is the introduction of bills and resolutions. The chair recognizes Councilmember Phillips. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues, and good morning to the city of Philadelphia. I have one resolution, non privileged resolution, for introduction today. Thank you. Would a clerk please read the title of the non privileged resolution? A resolution authorizing the creation of a task force to study and develop proposals, strategies, and recommendations to enhance parental, guardian engagement, oversight, accountability, and resources within the city of Philadelphia. This resolution will be placed on the final passage calendar for consideration at our next session of council. The chair recognizes Councilmember Kathy Gilmore Richardson. Good morning, council president. Good morning, colleagues. Today, I offer one privileged resolution and on your behalf, Council President, one privilege resolution and one bill. Thank you. Would the clerk please read the title of the bill and resolutions? A privileged resolution on behalf of Council President, honoring Philadelphia 76ers Hall of Famer Allen Iverson for his trailblazing career in the National Basketball Association and recognizing AI as a Philadelphia basketball living legend. This resolution will be placed on today's final passage calendar. And a privileged resolution introduced by Catherine Gilmore Richardson, recognizing and supporting the health and wellness of black mamas and birthing people by acknowledging April 11th through the 17th, 2024, as Black Maternal Health Week in the city of Philadelphia. This resolution will be placed on today's final passage calendar. And an ordinance on behalf of the council president authorizing encroachments in the nature of a sidewalk cafe in the vicinity of 2201 Christian Street, Philadelphia PA 19146, property under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. The chair recognizes council member Jamie Gaudier. Good morning, council president. Today I have one bill. Would the clerk please read the title of the resolution. An ordinance amending section 9-203 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Sales to revise and clarify certain provisions related to city parks and recreation facilities and make related technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. The chair recognizes Councilmember Isaiah Thomas. Good morning, Council President. <clears throat> I have nine non-privileged uh, resolutions to introduce uh, on your behalf, and one uh, privileged resolution I wanted to introduce um, that I'm co-introducing with uh, the great fellow from the Northeast, Councilmember Mike Driscoll, as, long, as well as um, our majority leader and the, the, really the strong advocate for apprenticeship programs, uh, Councilmember Gilmore Richardson. Today, in the uh, balcony area, we have the young people um, as well as their teacher, Mr. Jarrett, 
uh, from Mayfair. Uh, Mayfair students, can you all stand up so we can recognize you and give you a round of applause? I had a, a chance to be on a Dope Students podcast, uh, and I know other of my colleagues have participated in the amazing podcast they have and look at some of the great work that Mr. Jarrett does as well as the entire uh, uh, team over there at Mayfair. So uh, thank you all for being here, seeing your government in action, and continue to keep up the great work. Thank you, Council President, and thank you, colleagues. Will the clerk please read the title of the resolutions? A privileged resolution honoring and congratulating the champion of the week, Evan Jarrett, the leading building trades instructor at Mayfair School, for his exemplary service expanding vocational trading opportunities for Philadelphia's youth. This resolution will be placed on today's final passage calendar. and privileged, uh, non-privileged resolutions introduced on the council president's behalf. Confirming the appointment of Crystal Cubbage to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. Confirming the appointment of Sarah Ashley Andrews, Andrews to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. Confirming the appointment of Joan Stern to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. Confirming the reappointment of Reginald Streeter to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. Confirming the appointment of Wanda Novales to the Board of Education to, of the School District of Philadelphia. Confirming the appointment of Whitney Jones to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. Confirming the reappointment of Chow Wing Lam to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. Confirming the reappointment of Joyce Wilkerson to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. And confirming the appointment of Cheryl Harper to the Board of Education of the School District of Philadelphia. These resolutions will be referred to the appropriate committee. The chair recognizes Council Member Curtis Jones. Good morning, Mr. President. Two bills. Will the clerk please read the title of the bills? An ordinance amending Section 14 704 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Open Space and Natural Resources by changing the applicability of steep slope protection requirements for certain stream restoration activities, all under certain terms and conditions. This and, bill, go sorry. ahead. And an ordinance amending section 14-500 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Overlay Zoning Districts by amending section 14-524 entitled FDO, 4th District Overlay District, to establish use regulations on medical facilities all under certain terms and conditions. These two bills will be, be referred to the appropriate committee. The chair recognizes Councilman Rue Landau. Good morning, Council President. I'm uh, co-introducing one bill and one resolution that's uh, held with other council people right now. Would the clerk please read the title of the bill and resolution? No. You can go to Lazada. Okay. The chair recognizes <laughs> Council Member Lazada. Good morning, Council President. I offer one bill and one privileged resolution. Would the clerk please read the title of the bill and resolution? A privileged resolution recognizing and honoring the staff of McPherson Square Library for their heroic efforts in building and maintaining safe spaces within one of the most vulnerable but resilient communities in the city of Philadelphia. This resolution will be placed on today's final passage calendar. And an ordinance authorizing an encroachment in the nature of a staircase in the vicinity of 1951 East Monmouth Street, Philadelphia PA 19134 under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. The chair recognizes Council Member Jeffrey Young. Thank you, Mr. President, for one bill. Will the clerk please read the title of the bill? An ordinance amending section 14-529 of the Philadelphia Code entitled VDO, 5th District Overlay District, by removing the exemption from the landscaping standards in the zoning code, all under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. The chair recognizes Council Member Brooks. Good morning, Council President. I have one privileged resolution and one bill to introduce today. Will the clerk please read the title of the bill and the privileged resolution? 
a privileged resolution recognizing April 2024 as Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month in the city of Philadelphia and commending the work of HUNE, Hispan Hispanos Unidos para Niños Excepcionales in supporting people living with autism as well as their families and loved ones. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee and an ordinance amending chapter 9-800 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Landlord and Tenant to modify requirements and authorizations related to the city's residential eviction diversion program, including associated changes to the landlord and tenant relationship and to make certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee just for correcting the record. The former resolution will be placed on the date's final passage calendar. Yes. The, the chair recognizes council member Jim Harity. Good morning, council president. I have one privileged resolution co-introduced by councilwoman Lozada, Driscoll, Squilla, and myself. Would the clerk please read the title of the resolution? A privileged resolution honoring Jim Ridgway, member of the 24th District PDAC, whose lifelong residence in Harrogate has inspired his community outreach and cleanup efforts. This resolution will be placed on today's final passage calendar. Um, council will be at ease for a second. Councilmember Harry, do you have a bill you want to introduce I'm, as well? I'm sorry, I'm, the co-introducer Driscoll is going to put it in. Okay. I apologize for the confusion. All right. Just, just for clarity, um, in terms of the flow, only the prime sponsors have to introduce. Even though you're a co-sponsor, we just, for the record, want the prime sponsor just to introduce, and then we go from there. All right. Thank you. The chair recognizes. Councilmember O'Rourke. Thank you, Council President. I have one privilege resolution that I am co-introducing alongside the Councilmember Ru Landau. Thank you very much. Would a clerk please read the title of the resolution? A privileged resolution authorizing the Joint Committees on Housing, Neighborhood Development, and the Homeless and Licenses and Inspections to hold public hearings to examine the conditions of rental housing, rental code enforcement, and the need for rental repairs throughout the city of Philadelphia. This resolution will be placed on today's final passage calendar. The chair recognizes Councilmember Mike Driscoll. Good uh, morning, Mr. President. I offer four bills for consideration. Would the clerk please read the title of the bills? Thank you. An ordinance amending Title 19 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Finances, Taxes, and Collections, and Title 21 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Miscellaneous, by authorizing access to legal representation for certain owners of blighted and deteriorated dwellings and providing for tax forgiveness and exemptions for improvements to certain deteriorated areas and dwellings to incentivize the creation and improvement of affordable housing units all under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Kensington Avenue, Buckia Street, Frankfurt Avenue, and Tioga Street. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. An ordinance amending section 14-533 of the Philadelphia Code entitled MIN, Mixed Income Neighborhoods Overlay District, to expand the applicable area in the vicinity of Buckia Street and Tioga Street, all under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. And an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code by amending section 14-702 entitled Floor Area Height and Dwelling Unit Density Bonuses to amend provisions related to the Transit Improvements Bonus and by making related changes all under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. The Chair recognizes Councilmember O'Neill. The Chair recognizes Councilmember Mark Squiller. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer one bill. Clerk, please read the title of the bill. An ordinance authorizing the installation, ownership, and maintenance of various encroachments along the 700 block of Sansom Street, Philadelphia, PA 19106, under certain terms and conditions. This bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. The chair recognizes Councilmember Cindy Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. No bills or resolutions. The chair recognizes Councilmember Nina Mai. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. No bills or resolutions. The next order of business is reports from committees. The chair recognizes council member Mark Squilla for a report from the committee on appropriations. 
Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on uh, reports out three bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Will the Chief Clerk, please read the report. To the President and members of the Council of City Philadelphia, the Committee on Appropriations to which was referred Bill Number 240176, entitled Authorizing Transfers and Appropriations for Fiscal Year 2024 from the General Fund, Certain or All City Offices, Departments, Boards, and Commissions, and the Grants Revenue Fund, Certain or All City Offices, Departments, Boards, and Commissions, to the General Fund, Certain or All City Offices, Departments, Boards, and Commissions, and to the Aviation Fund, Certain or All City Offices, Departments, Boards, and Commissions, respectfully reports it has considered and amended the same and returns the attached bill to Council with a favorable recommendation. The Committee on Appropriations to which was referred Bill Number 240177, entitled Amending Bill Number 230145, entitled An Ordinance to Adopt a Fiscal 2024 Capital Budget, by revising various appropriation amounts and totals, all under certain terms and conditions, respectfully reports it is considered and amended the same and returns the attached bill to the Council with a favorable recommendation. Bill number 240178 entitled amending bill number 230144 entitled an ordinance to adopt a capital program for the six fiscal years 2024-2029 inclusive by revising various appropriation amounts and totals to, to conform to amendments to the FY 2024 capital budget ordinance all under certain terms and condition, conditions respectfully reports it has considered and amended the same and returns the attached bill to council with a favorable recommendation. The chair recognizes Councilman Scuola for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the rules of council be suspended from the first reading this day of bills numbers 240176, 240177, 240178. That were just read into the record by the Chief Clerk. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 240176, 240177, and 240178. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. The motion carries. Bills number 240176, 240177, and 240178 will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. The chair recognizes Councilmember Nina Ma for a report from the Committee on Public Health and Human Services. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Public Health and Human Services reports out two bills with a favorable recommendation. Will the clerk please read the report? To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee on Public Health and Human Services to which was referred Bill Number 240015, entitled Adding a New Chapter, 6-1600 to the Philadelphia Code, entitled City Reports on Opioid Antidote Use, to require certain reports from the City from the Office of the Managing Director to Council concerning the City's use of opioid antidote, all under certain terms and conditions, respectfully reports it has considered the same and returns the attached bill to Council with a favorable recommendation. And Bill Number 240017, entitled Adding a New Chapter 10-2700 to the Philadelphia Code, entitled City Reports with Impermissible Camping, to require certain reports from the Office of the Managing Director to Council concerning camping activities carried out in violation of the Code and the City's efforts to address such activities, all under certain terms and conditions, respectfully reports it has considered the same and returns the attached bill to Council with a favorable recommendation. The Chair recognizes Councilmember Ma for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading um, of this, this day of bill numbers 240015 and 240017 that were just read into the record by the chief clerk. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 240015 and 240017. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. The motion carries. Bills numbers 240-015 and 240-017 will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. The next order of business is the consideration of the calendar. I note that the bills just reported from committee with the suspension of the rules have been deemed to have had a first reading. These bills will be placed on the second reading and final patches calendar for our next session of council. As there are no additional bills on the first reading calendar, the chair recognizes Councilmember Gilmore Richardson for the purpose of calling up bills and resolutions on the second reading and final passage calendar. 
Thank you, Mr. President. The following bills and resolutions are on the second reading and final passage calendar for today. Numbers 240223, 240227, 240229, 240230, 24020-A, 240066, 240019, and 240087. Thank you. Before considering these bills and resolutions, we consider public comment as follows. Your public comment must concern matters on the second reading and final passage calendars for a possible action at today's council session. All speakers must sign up in order to testify. If you have not already signed up for today's session, please do so now by giving your name to Ms. Hassan at the table outside the rails to my left. Once you have signed up, you will be called in the order in which your name appears on the sign-up sheet. Under ideal circumstances, public commenters each will have three minutes to speak. However, this time limit may vary from session to session, and due to today's volume, the time limit will be two minutes. In order to be fair to all those wishing to speak, I intend to hold faithfully to the two-minute limit. When you begin speaking, you will see a green light on the podium. When there are 30 seconds remaining to your time, the light will turn yellow, which is your reminder to conclude your remarks. Once two minutes have passed, the light will turn red and the sergeant at arms will disconnect the microphone. At that moment, please yield the podium to the next speaker if you have not already done so. I also reserve the right pursuant to our rules of counsel to limit repetitious comments on the same matter. I will now ask the chief clerk to please read the name of our first speaker. Harris Musser on the Biden ACP Act. William DeToro Vargas on Autism Awareness. Good morning, my name is William Del Toro Vargas. Today I stand before you deeply moved and grateful as an individual with autism to express my heartfelt thanks to all those who champion the cause of people with disabilities. The City of Philadelphia's decision to pass the resolution in honor of UNE, the organization I represent, alongside recognizing Autism Acceptance Month, truly embodies the spirit of inclusivity we value so highly. It is with immense pride and honor that I address you today as someone with autism. First and foremost, my sincere appreciation uh, goes to um, Mayor Parker, Amy Nieves, the former executive director of the Commission with Disabilities, Council President Johnson, Council Member Brooks, who uh, sponsored this resolution, as well as uh, our local district council member, uh, Katsi Lozada, for their unwavering support and dedication. The commendable efforts of the Mayor's Commission on Disabilities, particularly under the leadership of Amy, has significantly impacted our community. In, 23, in 2023, Amy played a pivotal role in the relaunch of the Philadelphia Disabilities Characteristics Map, achieving global recognition for accessibility through collaborations with the U.S. Access Board and ESRI. I also want to mention that furthermore, Philadelphia's designation as the first sensory inclusive certified U.S. city by Coastal City marks a historic achievement. Autism Acceptance Month does not only celebrate individuals with autism, but also to reflect on and recognize the progress and ongoing efforts on behalf of people with disabilities. This month is a time for both education and reflection as we contemplate our achievements and path forward. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Would the clerk please call the next speaker? Paul Birdsong on Blueprint Communities.
My name is Paul Birdsong. I'm the general of the New Age Panther Party in Michigan and in Philadelphia, and I'm a deputy general of the chapter in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm here to speak about resolution 240229. It says at the bottom of the resolution, the city of Philadelphia supports and promotes neighborhood and or community revitalizations, including adaptive reuse of older buildings, investment in public infrastructure, active transportation, supported community engagement activity, building local leadership, developing collaborative partnerships, and participating or in practicing sound local and regional planning skills. My thing is, you have a group in Philadelphia that is ready to stand up and serve the community that's made up of civilians. We mentioned this yesterday in the budget meeting. These groups, these community organizations that are ready to actively, if you put money into a, a city where killing is happening as rapidly as it is here, that, that money is going to waste. That money needs to go into protecting those resources. If we're gonna beautify the city, we need civilian oversight and we need people from the community that could get paid to be there to police those neighborhoods and those communities and keep them safe. We also need that state-of-the-art forensics lab that the mayor proposed so that we can protect this city and solve the crimes, the 50% of the homicides that aren't solved here every year, so they could be solved. This needs to happen right now. I was watching an old news clip that said that there's already a state-of-the-art facility in University City that could be used for this right now. So my question is, people, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? It's already there. We don't have to wait. We can have justice and closure now. What are we waiting for? Give me a logical excuse why we're waiting, why these mothers from 2018 are still waiting to find out who killed their child. I see the red light. All power to the people. Clerk, please call the next speaker. Marvin Robinson on rental code resolution. Uh, first of all, I was going to give my honor to my Lord and Savior, to the President, to the City Councils, to everybody here. My name is Myron Robinson. I'm a member of Rental United Philadelphia. I'm a committee person and the and, and second vice president of the Fourth Ward Executive Board. I am also a, a, the mayor of West Philadelphia, those that know me. Um, I'm here on behalf of supporting a uh, revolution for rental um, repair. Um, I wanted to say uh, I appreciate those that came out to our press conference meeting yesterday. Um, to the city councilors that was there, can y'all please raise your hands and let us, the people know that was at the press conference. Thank you very much. Um, also, I'm here because I had my own experience about renting for landlords, uh, bad landlords. They need to be held accountable more. So what we're trying to come up with a uh, revolution is to hold landlords and realtors more accountable for their actions that they're not taking care of as tenants. It's over 50% of rentals in Philadelphia. So that's 50% house owner and 50% rental. And no rentals should have to go to suffering in a way that I've been seeing people suffering in my community. Remember, I'm a committee person, so I deal with a lot of people and I hear their concerns. So I'm gonna let you know about mine a little bit. And I'm not gonna take too long because I know this bell gonna go off. But I wanna just share this with y'all. Please, this should not be a bill, if hopefully if it do come to be a bill, that it should take long for all the city councils to come together. Because this is a responsibility to all y'all in the city of Philadelphia. My main concern is hopefully that those that start sponsoring this bill, that y'all rest of your city council will continue to support this bill because this helps everybody in the city of Philadelphia. And another thing I wanted to also say, we're here, I'm here because in my neighborhood, where realtors, big time realtors come in my neighborhood, buying up the properties, kicking low people income out and then when it's time for them to go back in there, they can't afford the homes. I had saw that in my own neighborhood in the fourth ward. I had saw that. Also, we had a garden that they had 
took away from us. All right, one minute. They took, took the garden away from us, and, and we went to let the people know that we cannot allow villagers keep coming in our neighborhood doing what they're doing. So thank you. I will be here every day as long as we try to get this bill passed when it comes to be passed because this is common sense. And I don't mean to take up this time and I'm not here to fuss with nobody, but I'm here to let y'all know we need this bill to come. To, I mean, we need this resolution to come to be a bill. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the next person for public comment? Mark Postel, Blue Brink Communities. Good morning. I'm Mark Postel, concerned citizen of Philadelphia. Um, I was here yesterday at the budget meeting, and I'm here in support of directing funding for citizens that really want to be a part of a visible presence on the street. Um, I believe it's very necessary. The mayor declared us in a state of emergency January 1st, and to be quite honest, I believe we've been in a state of emergency before January 1st, and I believe we still are. Um, from petty crimes like children smashing windows and denning cars, to the senseless violence and gun murders out here that's taking place. Um, we're losing a lot of people, and I believe that uh, a visible presence on the streets, feet on the street, boots on the ground, Town Watch 2.0, Guardian Angels, whatever you want to call it is necessary. Um, we have too many organizations ready, willing, and able to get out there on the street. And um, I, I joined a, a, a movement called Operation Hug the Block, and it was 77 nights uh, from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. We was out there trying to deter the violence on the streets. And um, statistically, statistically shown, we, we made an impact. And I believe that, um, you know, even if people like you, more importantly, who joined us on the first night of Operation Hug the Block, Mr. President, and Mr. O'Rourke, you joined us a few times out there on, on it. I believe that's very important for our community to see how much you guys really care, you know? And I think that citizens would join us more if you guys were out there, along with police and high-ranking officials off-duty coming and join us, joining us to walk the streets. It's enough of us. It's more love than it is the hate out there, but the hate is shining through in our city. And it, it's scary. You know, I'm a parent of four, and, and I'm scared for my son to walk three blocks to the left and one block up. And, and we, sh we, don't, we don't deserve that. We deserve a more healthier way of life. And at the end of the day, we have the money to do it. So I support direct funding to groups like Philly Truce and Feats on the Streets, Boots on the Ground. Thank you. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the next speaker for public comment? Kate, Kate Perez on Biden's ACP Act. My name is Kate. The Affordable Connectivity Program can offer household discounts on their internet service up to $30 and $75 for people on uh, qualifying tribal lands. In some cases, this makes the internet free. There's three ways to be eligible for the ACP program. The household can already meet their provider's low internet program, or they can qualify, or they should be uh, at or 200% below the federal poverty line. Someone in this household has to be qualified for government assistance programs. Those are programs like SNAP and WIC. SNAP is what we knew as food stamps, and the program actually already took a huge cut last year which lost people about $82 of SNAP benefits a month. The WIC program is actually also facing a funding cliff, despite having supported the development of two out of five American babies. It's hard to imagine how nearly all of our welfare programs are chronically underfunded, but we still have billions of dollars to send to foreign militaries. April is our last fully funded month of the Affordable Connectivity Program meaning that soon 20 million Americans might not have access to the internet anymore. That's about one in, five, one in five Americans who don't have access to the internet cite cost as a factor. These are our most vulnerable population and the government keeps dragging their feet on ensuring that these programs are fully funded. 20 million households might not have the expendable income and $30 a month is $360 a year. 
That's maybe enough for a doctor's visit, maybe some blood work. We use the internet for essentials, like finding doctors and having the privilege to be in a country that still has functioning hospitals. We use the internet to contact our families, and we're lucky to live in a country where we still have families to call. We need a ceasefire, and we need a permanent arms embargo against Israel. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the next speaker? Kate Wallace on autism awareness. Good morning, Council President. My name is Dr. Kate Wallace, and I am speaking in support of Council Member Brooks' resolution recognizing April 2024 as Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month in the City of Philadelphia. I am a developmental and behavioral pediatrician at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, or CHOP, a researcher at CHOP Center for Autism Research, and a faculty member at CHOP's Policy Lab. As a clinician who cares for many autistic children from early childhood through young adulthood, a health equity researcher who studies autism, I am thrilled to voice my support for the proposed resolution recognizing April 24, 2024 as Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month and commending the work of JUNE, Hispanos Unidos para Niños Excepcionales, and the Philadelphia Autism Project in supporting people living with autism as well as their families and loved ones. As a developmental and behavioral pediatrician, I have the privilege of working with children and families on the autism spectrum. I am also the lead researcher on the study cited in the resolution that found that one in 31 children across the Philadelphia region meets criteria for autism, or 3.2% of all children. While decades of data found that children who identify as black or Latina were under-identified as being on the autism spectrum, more recent old national and our own local data suggest that black, Hispanic, Latina, and Asian children are at least as likely as white children to have autism. This means that autism is a form of neurodivergence that affects every population across the city and that every council person represents a district in which children and families on the spectrum reside. We are so grateful to City Council for recognizing the importance of autism in Philadelphia through this resolution. We know, however, there's a lot of work to do to help all autistic children and families and children achieve health equity in terms of support, services, and ultimately, outcomes and prosperity. CHOP is committed to ameliorating health disparities in autism through our clinical programs, research, and community outreach. We are hopeful that we can serve as a resource and a partner for City Council to make the lives of families better. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak today and for recognizing April 2024 as Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month. Thank you. Would the chair, would the clerk please call the next person for public comment? Jamil Owens on Autism Awareness. Good morning, Council President. My name is Jamil Owens, and I'm speaking in support of Council Member Brooks' resolution recognizing April 2024 as Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month in the City of Philadelphia. First, I would like to thank Council Member Brooks and her staff, as well as all of the Council members here today, for allowing me and my colleague, Dr. Wallace, to speak. And a special congratulations to Hune and the Philadelphia Autism Project for all of the amazing work they have done and will continue to do. I am the Family Relations Coordinator at the, set, at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia's Center for Autism Research. I am also a father of an autistic child and a lifelong Philadelphia resident. The reality for most parents with a child with special needs is that they will never have a normal child. Our thoughts often take off into a space of depression and regret. When my son Shane was diagnosed at the age of three, I did what most men do. I rationalized my son's worth in society based on the diagnosis he was given. The direct correlation with the painful stain and blow to my ego and pride. 
For his mother, she blamed herself for birthing a child who had already been characterized and labeled without even having a chance to explore the world in timeless innocence, which at we as adults try to achieve again every day. As I read this to all of you right now, another marriage will be annulled due to the stress of the diagnosis. Another child has been placed in a corner of a room and left alone because they are not understood. Right now, a father is at work masking the stress and sadness of their child because he feels he has no one. A mother has given their autistic child away to another family member because they feel alone, and they are using the term too often said, which is autism one. Each one of you are here today because of the public believes in you, and I believe in you. My ask for each one of you is to join us in educating and supporting the families in which we all serve. My reason is simply that I cannot love my son and advocate for him without doing the same for other autistics like him and their families. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Clerk, please call the next speaker. Cleopatra Robinson. Good morning. I am Cleopatra Robinson, and I'm the founder and executive director of A Home From Shauna Foundation, which is a 501c3 that is raising awareness of the black maternal mortality crisis and working to improve birth outcomes by educating families on doula support, safe childbirth, and childbirth rights. I would like to thank Council President Johnson and Majority Leader Gilmore Richardson for her continued support behind black maternal health and all council members before me. It's critical that you support Black Maternal Health Week. Black Maternal Health Week is considered a week of activism and community building founded by Black Mamas Matter Alliance to raise awareness, inspire activism, and strengthen organizing for Black Maternal Health. For seven days, Black Maternal Health focused organizations from across the country align with the same mission as we collaborate and host events that create widespread impact to support black birthing people and maternal health. Council President and Council Members, as I am in support of recognizing a week to black maternal health, I ask that you not only acknowledge Black Maternal Health Week, but that you support grassroots organizations like A Home From China Foundation that are actually here in Philadelphia that advocate and support black and, brown fam black and brown pregnant people in your communities that are showing up 10 toes down the other 358 days of the year. Thank you. Clerk, please call the next speaker. Solomon McNeil. Good morning, and thank you all for coming. Again, my name is Salima McNeil. I'm the founder and executive director of Oshun Family Center. Um, thank you, council members, especially council members Nina Ahmad um, and Catherine Gilmore Richardson, who has been alongside me in this fight for black maternal health since the beginning. Um, again, Oshun Family Center is a nonprofit organization here in Philadelphia geared towards helping to reduce the disparities in black maternal morbidity and mortality. And we do that in several ways. We do that by providing mental health support with reproductive psychotherapists who understand the plight of black birthing families. We provide doula support and lactation support through our clinical trial collaboration that we have with Temple University. This is unprecedented with us being able to sit at the table with black women to curate research studies on black bodies. We have been victimized by the health system for generations and we are looking to change that today and moving forward. Um, we know what the issues are. We know that we are dying three to four times higher than our white counterparts for reasons such as cardiovascular disease, racism, opioid disorder, and mental health disorders that result in suicide. I come to you today as an advocate, as a maternal mental health disruptor, and a parent and victim myself of the um, hospital system. I am entering my 18th parenting anniversary tomorrow, and throughout that journey, I have learned so much because being a survivor of a traumatic birthing experience has really fostered the work that I do here today.
So I welcome you all to join us in the fight of black maternal morbidity and mortality and creating better health systems for our families to thrive because it starts at inception. Well, thank you all so much. I'm about to say, did they cut my mic? I seen the green. Okay. <laughs> I'm here today to garner your support for the resolution that's being introduced for us to uh, recognize Black Maternal Health Week for April 11th through the 17th annually. This is something that we do every year. Um, Oshun Family Center with other community-based organizations are the ones who are leading the, this mission. So join us this year and every year moving forward for Black Maternal Health Week, April 11th through the 17th. And I encourage you all to check your emails for my invitations. Thank you. Clerk, please call the next speaker. Tuesday Chalmers. Tuesday Chalmers. Hi, my name is uh, Tuesday Chalmers. I'm the teen and adult librarian at McPherson Square Branch. And I just kind of wanted to tell you about us. Um, thank you, uh, Councilwoman uh, Lozada, for inviting me here. I stand in front of you as a librarian, but more importantly, as a um, longtime resident of Harrogate and Kensington. I grew up there. So McPherson has always have a special place in my heart. Um, it has a, ris a rich history in the neighborhood, past and present, and our staff continue to pave the way for the future youth. Um, it is a safe hub for all. The library has a heavily attended um, after school program and it provides lunches daily. Um, we make sure that no uh, child goes hungry. Um, and there's always a fun activity um, to do. Uh, families can, can, uh, can attend music lessons, cooking lessons, chicken story time, which is one of my favorite, uh, slime making, gardening, arts and crafts. And for adults, we have book clubs, uh, career workshops, crochet. And during the year, the library collaborates with other city agencies, with um, Parks and Rec, MDOs, and the Philadelphia Police to activate a safe space outside and host large events, such as the Fall Fest and the Winter Fest. Um, this past December, McPherson gave out 500 plus toys to our youth during the Winter Fest. Um, the staff at McPherson has participated in Narcan and Stop the Bleed trainings. The library has a hygiene closet for our patrons in need. We truly care about our community and try every day to make the library a place of safety and inclusivity. Sorry. I'm honored here to stand in front of you and share my story and thank you all um, for listening. Thank you. Well, Kirk, please call the next speaker. Samuel Katab. Samuel Katab, is this about the resolution? No, I didn't think so. Because I was going to ask for equal time as the snake. Okay, thank you, thank Sam. You. Good to see you, though. Would a clerk please call the next speaker? Would the clerk please call the next speaker? Winnie Zhao. That concludes today's public comment period. We will now consider the bills and resolutions on the second reading and final passage calendar. Will the clerk please read the title of resolution number 240223. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the 44th and Aspen urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 644-646 North 40th Street, a portion of the Mantua urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 827-843-847-849-841-848-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-849-
on Thank Jamie Gaudier's behalf. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council President. On, on behalf of Council Member Gaudier, I move for the adoption of the resolution. It has been moved and properly seconded. The resolution number 240223 be adopted. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. The motion carries. The resolution is adopted. Would a clerk please read the title of resolution number 240227? A resolution calling on President Biden and Congress to prioritize a permanent reauthorization and funding of the bipartisan Affordable Connectivity Program, ACP. The chair recognizes Councilmember Rulandow for a motion regarding resolution number 240227. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that resolution number 240227 be adopted. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. The motion carries. The resolution is adopted. The clerk will please read the title of resolution number 240229. A resolution authorizing the participation of Philadelphia in the 2024 cohort of the Pennsylvania Blueprint Communities Program. The chair recognizes Councilmember Lozada for a motion regarding resolution number 240229. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that resolution number 240229 be adopted. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the motion carries. The resolution is adopted. The clerk will please read the title of resolution number 240230. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority deeds conveying fee simple title to 2903, 2907, and 2925 Cecil B. Moore Avenue in the 5th Councilmatic District of the City of Philadelphia, and further authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to transfer to the Philadelphia Land Bank fee simple title to such properties pursuant to Section 16-405 of the Philadelphia Code. The Chair recognizes Councilmember Young for a motion regarding Resolution Number 240230. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded. The resolution number 240230 be adopted. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. The motion carries. The resolution is adopted. Will the clerk please read the title of bill number 240019. An ordinance adopting an amendment to Section 5 of the Articles of Incorporation of the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development by increasing the authority's term of existence to a date 50 years from the date of approval of articles of amendment by the Secretary of the Commonwealth under certain terms and conditions. This bill having been read on two different days, the question now is, shall the bill pass finally? Will the Chief Clerk please call the roll? Council Member Phillips? Aye. Council Member Gilmore Richardson? Councilmember Gauthier? Aye. Councilmember Thomas? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Landau? Councilmember Lasada? Councilmember Young? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Harrity? Aye. Councilmember O'Rourke? Councilmember Driscoll? Aye. Councilmember O'Neill? Councilmember Squilla? Aye. Councilmember Bass? Aye. Councilmember Ahmad? Aye. And Council President Johnson? Aye. The ayes are 16, the nays are zero, a majority of all members having voted in the affirmative, the bill passes. Will the clerk please read any additional resolution on today's calendar? A privileged resolution introduced um, by Councilmember Gilmore Richardson on the Council President's behalf, honoring the Philadelphia 76ers Hall of Famer Allen Iverson for his trailblazing career in the National Basketball Association, recognizing AI as a Philadelphia basketball living legend. The Chair recognizes Councilmember Thomas for a motion and a resolution. Thank you, Council President. On behalf of Councilmember Gilmore Richardson I, and on your behalf, I move for the adoption of the resolution. It has been moved and properly seconded. The resolution be adopted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. And a privileged resolution introduced by Councilmember Gilmore Richardson, recognizing and supporting the health and wellness of black mamas and birthing people by acknowledging April 11th through the 17th, 2024, as Black Maternal Health Week in the city of Philadelphia. The chair recognizes Councilmember Thomas for a motion on a resolution. 
Thank you, Council President. Again, on behalf of Councilmember Gilmore Richardson, I move for the adoption of the resolution. It has been moved and properly seconded that the resolution be adopted. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. And the resolution is adopted. And a resolution honoring and congratulating the champion of the week, Evan Jarrett, the leading building trades instructor at Mayfair School for his exemplary service expanding vocational training opportunities for Philadelphia's youth introduced by Councilmember Thomas. The chair recognizes Councilmember Isaiah Thomas for a motion on the resolution. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It has been moved and properly seconded that the resolution be adopted. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. And a resolution introduced by Councilmember Lasada, recognizing and honoring the staff of McPherson Square Library for their heroic efforts in building and maintaining safe spaces within one of the most vulnerable but resilient communities in the city of Philadelphia. The chair recognizes Councilmember Lasada for a motion on a resolution. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It has been moved and properly seconded that the resolution be adopted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. And a resolution introduced by Councilmember Brooks, recognizing April 2024 as Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month in the city of Philadelphia, and commending the work of Hune, Hispanos Unidos para Niños Excepcionales, in supporting people living with autism as well as their families and loved ones. The chair recognizes Councilmember Brooks. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the resolution be adopted. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. And a resolution introduced by Councilmember Harrity, a resolution honoring Jim Ridgway, member of the 24th District PDAC, whose lifelong residence in Harrogate has inspired his community outreach and cleanup efforts. The Chair recognizes Councilmember Jim Harrity. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the resolution be adopted. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. And a resolution introduced by Councilmember O'Rourke, authorizing the joint communities on housing, neighborhood development, and the homeless, and licenses and inspections to hold public hearings to examine the conditions of rental housing, rental code enforcement, and the need for rental repairs throughout the city of Philadelphia. The chair recognizes Councilmember O'Rourke. And I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the resolution be adopted. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. <laughs> there are no more resolutions on the calendar for today. Are there any speeches on part of the minority? Council President, um, the eviction diversion program is set to expire this June. The bill I am introducing today, along with my colleagues, Council Member Gautier, Council Member O'Rourke, Council Member Landau, and co-sponsored by, let me go through the list, uh, Council Members, Isaiah Thomas, Nina Ahmad, Curtis Jones, Ketsy Lasada, Jim Harrity, and, Dris and Mike Driscoll um, joining us as co-sponsors. And we now have a strong majority and growing support for making eviction diversion permanent in Philadelphia. Eviction diversion is a program that works. At yesterday's press conference, we heard from Hania Harvey, a black mother, who briefly, whose briefly homelessness after the apartment she was living in was deemed unsafe by LNI. She lived in a hotel room with her son for three weeks, exhausting her savings, even after she found a new apartment and a new job at, John, at Amazon, she still had to sell her car in order to keep up with rent. She knew she needed to do everything in her power to avoid eviction, an eviction filing. For people who have eviction filings on their record, is next to impossible to find livable housing. And the people most impacted by eviction filings are black mothers like Hania Harvey. Thanks to the eviction diversion program, Hania is able to avoid an eviction filing, stay in a home with her son, and yesterday she shared that the program helped her get through the most difficult times in her life, 
she told us with pride that she now is able to pay her rent on time. And for Hania and thousands of other Philadelphia families, eviction diversion has been a lifesaver. A crucial factor in the program's success has been rental assistance or targeted financial assistance, which helped roughly 38,000 landlords recoup past due rent um, last year. With the support and leadership of Council President Johnson, the city contributed $60 million in rental assistance over the past two years, making it possible for thousands of landlords and renters to avoid going to court over an eviction filing. The program is a national model, praised by the White House and by Governor Shapiro for stabilizing neighborhoods and keeping people in their homes. And now that Philadelphia has become a leader in housing justice, we cannot go back. And in the midst of a national housing crisis, we must continue this program that is proven, popular, and effective at keeping parents, of keeping families in their homes. Today, I'm also introducing a resolution, resolution to recognize April as Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month in Philadelphia, and to commend the work of HUNE in supporting people living with autism as well as their families and loved ones. Groups like HUNE have helped to raise awareness about autism, which has led to more and early diagnosis and better health outcomes. As the chair of the Committee of People with Disabilities, I want to thank Hune for their important work to increase awareness and build a culture, a culture of care and support around children with autism. This April, let's keep building on the progress that we've been, that we've made by recognizing, embracing, and supporting people with autism and their families. Thank you so much, Council President. You're welcome. Good job. The chair recognizes Councilmember O'Rourke. Thank you, Council President. I'd like to start by uh, acknowledging uh, the presence of someone I love very dearly. Uh, I had the benefit of having my wife here on the first council session, but today I have the benefit of having my mother and my only begotten nephew who are in the chamber here behind me. Can y'all just wave to the people? My nephew is a citizen of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania on the other side of the, of the mountains, uh, way up there near Erie. And my mother happens to be a resident of Scottsdale, Arizona, so I'm grateful to have them with us Welcome. this week and this weekend. Um, I'd also like to go on by saying thank you to my partners and my fellow toilers when it comes to this, our Philly Neighborhoods platform, namely members Gautier, member Landau, and of course, the esteemed trailblazing minority leader herself, Kendra Brooks. These leaders, these sisters, these women, all bring critical insight and experience to this package, and it's been a wonderful learning experience, really, to see it all come together. And I want us to think about what's on the table here for a second. Philadelphia is a beautiful city with housing stock, however, that doesn't always age as beautifully. That's why a range of repair programs have more folks signed up to participate than actual resources to serve them. And if homeowners are dealing with these struggles in properties they're often fighting to hold on to, I think it wouldn't be hard to say that we all know that renters are facing these struggles as well. Um, so Councilmember Landau and I are introducing a resolution calling for a hearing into how LNI ensures that rental buildings are up to code and that landlords are actually treating their tenants with dignity that they deserve. Tenants, by the way, aren't just sitting around and waiting uh, with this. They've been fighting for decades upon decades. And since I've already called out the names of some strong women, I want to name a few more as a way to talk a bit about Philly's history of tenant organizing. Let's start with Lucy, Lucy Spies. The history buffs will know that Mrs. Spies was a resident of the old 7th Ward, the one that W.E.B. Du Bois himself wrote about, the one that was recently celebrated through a months-long tribute. We cherish the culture that was fostered in this space, but let's be frank, the old 7th Ward was slumlord central. Miss Spies lived in one such slum with her three children, and tragically, they died there as well. One cold December evening in 1936, their building collapsed, and the Spies family perished along with a few other co-tenants. That tragedy spurred authorities to take that era's idea of bold action to build public housing in the wake of the collapse. 
but it also spurred residents of the Seventh Ward to join organizers as the Tenants League. And this black grassroots formation was firmly at the vanguard of the fight for fair and safe housing, applying people power in a time when black folks' demands were supposed to be channeled through pre-selected quote unquote leaders. I also want to name Miss Eden Gibson, a member of Renters United Philadelphia, <laughs> who joined my colleagues and I yesterday as we announced this particular platform. Her and other co-tenants are dealing with pipes that are probably older than her. <clears throat> and as with so many Philadelphians, one day those pipes burst. This was after over 20 calls to her landlord, who basically said he'd get around to it. For Ms. Gibson and her daughter, this led to intolerable living conditions and hospital visits. Which way did she turn, becomes the question? To community, to organizing as part of a larger movement, one that includes today's grassroots formations like Philly Thrive, the Philadelphia Rent Control Coalition, the Philly Tenants Union, and the West Oak Lane Tenants who recently called out their landlord in tandem with DSA. And given this history and this present rea re reality, the, the least we can do as legislators is bring real public oversight to these patterns of lacking code enforcement. Sadly, the era of slum wars in Philly has not ended. I'm not saying all large landlords fit this mold, but it'd be a lie to that, uh, to, to that none, to say that none of them do. So we do need to know how L&I recognizes bad actors and makes them do their job. It's the least that we can do so that folks on the outside can understand what they're facing as they organize for a city that offers renters protection, not precarity. I believe it's a noble thing and it'll be glory to this body if we're able to pass it. Thank you so much for your time, Council President. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. <laughs> Speech on behalf of the majority, the chair recognizes Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as we conclude Ramadan, as we concluded Easter, as we look forward to Passover, um, the one thing that I prayed on and I've learned is that you can pray for peace, but you can't legislate it. And what we have uh, realized is that when both sides don't like something, we should probably listen, uh, and that we, in an effort to change the world, we should begin under our feet. So I join my colleague in understanding that and um, hope that we can pray for both peace in, in Philadelphia and peace in the Middle East. Uh, but we cannot, cannot legislate it. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome, Councilmember Jones. <laughs> the chair recognizes Councilmember Jamie Gaudier. Thank you, Council President. Um, I just wanted to commend uh, Minority Leader Brooks for her leadership um, and her office's leadership in um, working on the eviction diversion program and making it permanent. Um, and I'm also grateful to all of our colleagues, so many of our colleagues um, that co-sponsored um, you know, this program was something that was born out of crisis. Um, it came during the pandemic when we were being um, inundated with calls from people who were scared um, that they would get evicted during, you know, the biggest um, global health crisis of our time. Um, but sometimes the best ideas are born out of crisis. Um, and just because we're out of the, you know, out of the crisis period doesn't mean um, that the eviction diversion program and other good ideas that came during the pandemic shouldn't stay in place. So I'm really excited um, about the effort to make it permanent. And I just wanted to um, remind us about some of the good outcomes that we have seen. You know, prior to the pandemic, Philadelphia was the fourth highest evicting city in the entire country. Um, as Council Member Brooks said, when we're talking about evictions, mostly we're talking about black and brown women, um, single moms, um, you know, getting essentially kicked out on the street and then having a black mark on their records um, for years and years and years. And, you know, thanks to eviction diversion, we have an average of 10,000 fewer evictions every single year than we did pre-pandemic. Um, and I also want to encourage us to, um, as we go through these budget negotiations, to make sure that rental assistance 
gets in the budget. Um, eviction diversion works best when there is rental assistance um, on the table because many times it's sort of a, a payment issue. Um, you know, when we were flush with rental assistance, we were able to offset over 75% of evictions and, and stop um, filings from even happening. Um, and it's imperative that we make sure that we still have that as a resource. Um, and as we know from the budget hearings, um, you know, a lot of that money is not included um, in the current proposal, but I think we should be, I want to encourage us not to be penny wise and pound foolish because we're going to pay that money one way or another. When people lose their homes, that's a draw on the mental health system or um, the criminal legal system. Um, it, I think it contributes to violence in our community. So we're going to put the money out either way. And we actually have a great return on our investment if we can help people fill you know, the everyday uh, gap that they have between their income um, and their housing expenses. So thanks to so many council members for supporting. Um, I hope that this gets through successfully, and I hope that we can replenish um, the rental assistance funding that helps eviction diversion to perform so well. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. The chair recognizes Councilmember Anthony Phillips. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Council President Johnson and colleagues, I offer today a non privileged re resolution uh, that addresses a very important issue. Uh, in the city of Philadelphia. No issue is more obvious today in America than our failure to truly support and empower and resource parents and families in the educational and life outcomes of their children. It is a national crisis that transcends race, religion, and socioeconomic status. We need to know more, investigate everything, explore innovative ideas, listen to every corner and remove all barriers, whatever they may be, between success and our children. And we need to move now. We are very conscious of the fact that we are recognizing that parents are doing the best that they can. And what this resolution says is that we see you and we hear you, but we also want to figure out ways in which we can do to to further support you uh, and with resources and care and support. The closest thing to a silver bullet that exists in educational outcomes for children is parental and family engagement in the educational lives of children. Engagement is not passive. It is not just simply showing up at an every once in a while event or PTA meeting at school. Those are a start but they are hardly enough to shape real positive gains in educational outcomes, healthy uses of social media, strong parent and guardian relationships with children, or a mentally healthier child on an individual or society-wide basis. The Annie Casey Foundation introduced an exploration of issues around parental involvement and engagement this way. If you could wave a magic wand that would improve the chances of school success for your children as well as their classmates, would you take up that challenge? Needless to say, we know that tens of thousands of parents and guardians would answer yes. We know that an overwhelming majority of teachers and educators in the city will resoundingly answer yes also. With the two most important elements, parents and teachers already aligned, it is now time for us to formalize, empower, and embolden serious stakeholders to tell us what to do and to inform our work as policymakers. The two most invested parties in education are parents slash guardians and teachers. Council President, our mayor's recent declaration of a state of emergency confirmed what all of us already know. And that is there's a great peril lurking in our city that, comp that compromises children, students, families, entire schools, and our future. Gun violence last year to the tune of 3,000 incidents with 17% involving people under 21. Social media accelerated and driven mayhem and crime, compromising, compromising mental health realities, and parents and guardians at their wits and in, in 
indicate to us that it is time for us to do a comprehensive dive into solutions and steps that we can take to improve our city's compromise outcomes. That is why this resolution authorizing the creation of the parent slash guardian engagement task force is so vital. None of us attended K-12 with the ever-consuming specter of social media as it exists today. What that means alone demands consideration and recommendations to the mayor and to us. The task force will be comprised of parents and guardians, teachers, students, public sector employees, practitioners, and experts. Six months after its creation, we will receive a report of actionable, actionable information that can inform our work and call greater attention to parental engagement. Council President, thank you for your leadership and activism around this issue. Colleagues, thank you for your leadership around this issue as well, which we all care deeply about. I encourage every member to support this resolution when it's called up for vote next week. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. The chair recognizes Council Member Ketsi Lozada. Thank you, Council President. Um, I've had the privilege for the last six weeks of welcoming some amazing scholars from Sankofa Freedom Academy Charter School. Um, I'd like to recognize Will Nessels, Samaya Harper, and Z Zaire White, um, and also uh, teacher Chuck McLaughlin, who are here joining us today. I'd like to say thank you to them um, for their time in our office, for sharing their wisdom with us as young people. I wish them the best um, uh, in, in their continued academic journey, um, and I invite them to come back and join us as often Can as they Can they stand? Can, Can y'all stand? Let's give them a round of applause. Oftentimes when we hear about Kensington, we always hear about the negative, but in the midst of all the chaos lies a beacon of hope of, in, in the community, McPherson Library. McPherson is a safe place where children are sheltered from the trauma that they experience every day. It is staffed with hardworking librarians who are there to foster their growth. At McPherson Square Library, they are more than just librarians. They are first aid nurses, therapists, teachers, and guidance counselors. Their work has made McPherson an, an, an oasis. I want to thank the McPherson Library staff for everything they do for our children every day. Joining me today, as you heard earlier, is Tuesday Chalmers, uh, a librarian at McPherson. I encourage all of you to speak with her, get to know her, get to know about her work, um, as well as some of the challenges that they experience every day. Um, I'm grateful for everything they do on the ground. Um, their, their work at, in Kensington is not easy, but they show up every day, um, regardless of whether they have the necessary resources to be able to, prov to provide our families um, with the supports that they need. And so just wanted to recognize uh, Tuesday for everything she does on a daily basis. <laughs> Thank you, Council President. You're welcome. The chair recognizes Council Member Jeffrey J. Young. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just want to talk about two quick issues. Um, one, one thing I've been keeping uh, my eye on and paying attention to um, is the efforts by some of the largest corporations um, in this country um, to uh, essentially uh, use the courts to defeat um, what their workers have been trying to um, uh, collectively uh, come together to protect their rights. Um, so got to call out these companies, Amazon, uh, Trader Joe's, um, and Starbucks. Uh, their workers have all agreed uh, to um, unionize, essentially, to collectively bargain for work workplace uh, protections. Um, however, because uh, these companies and organizations were not uh, successful in defeating um, the, the, the right to collectively bargain um, and organize, they have now sued uh, to essentially say that the um, uh, national um, 
uh, Labor Relations Board is unconstitutional. So they're trying to dismantle the system uh, that allows workers to collectively uh, bargain. And I, I think we should keep an eye on that, uh, Mr. President, um, because it's going to have uh, chilling effects here uh, locally um, as some of those companies are some of the largest employers that, in our region. Um, and if we support uh, you know, workers' rights to organize, um, we have to be vigilant um, and be respectful of that collective bargaining process. Um, and so I just you know, want to let folks know that's something I'm paying close attention to um, because, again, if they're trying to use the courts to say that the structure um, of the National uh, Labor Relations Board is unconstitutional, um, then you know, they're going to continue to use the courts uh, in other ways as well. So um, I think we, that's something we have to pay attention to here locally. Um, but bringing it back to Philadelphia focus uh, specifically, uh, today at 8 a.m., Benjamin Franklin High School uh, held an emergency meeting uh, because asbestos was found uh, in the schools. Um, you know, I, my, I have a staffer who was a former teacher at Ben Franklin uh, who understands that issue um, intimately, uh, who tried to intervene um, in, in this meeting on my behalf uh, to get information to let my constituents know what's going on, um, but he was denied entrance to this meeting. Um, and so the, I'm looking forward to the upcoming budget hearing with the school district of Philadelphia and, and also uh, the confirmation hearings of the, the school board uh, appointees. So I just wanted to put that on the record, Mr. President. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Young. Look forward to a very, very robust discussion. Um, the chair recognizes Councilmember Rue Landau. Thank you, Council President. Um, today, I was incredibly proud to co-introduce an extension of the eviction diversion program. For those of you who know me, housing justice has been my life's work, and I could not be more excited to get this legislation on the floor. If you're out there listening, say it with me, housing is a human right. <laughs> Thank you so much to my fellow council members, uh, Brooks, Gaudier, and O'Rourke for co-introduction and for all of your work and your office's work on this legislation. <clears throat> Yesterday we stood together with our colleagues, council members Thomas and Ahmed, to speak about the importance of expanding this program, which has been a game changer and a lifesaver for so many people across Philadelphia since it was originally put in place. And today, I am so proud that we have the support of 10 council members for this crucial lifeline. This initiative has proven to be a beacon of hope for countless Philadelphians facing the threat of homelessness, providing a vital safety net during times of economics uncertainty. At its core, the Eviction Diversion Program represents a compassionate and pragmatic approach to addressing housing insecurity. Here in Philadelphia, it's an understatement to say we are facing a housing crisis. A quarter of Philadelphians are renters who are cost burden. Think about that. That's one in four of our neighbors. That means they need to make tough decisions every month to keep a roof over their heads, including whether or not to buy groceries, baby formula, and even utilities to keep, uh, like gas to keep warm. Housing insecurity is one of the biggest crises in Philadelphia and is uh, why I could not be more excited to move this legislation forward. I spent a decade as a housing attorney at Community Legal Services where I thought for, fought for thousands of low-income families to remain in safe, affordable, quality, and accessible housing when they were facing eviction. Later, as the director of the Fair Housing Commission, I helped craft this very legislation um, that created the eviction diversion program alongside um, uh, council members Gaudier and Brooks as well. I know firsthand how important this program has been to renters across the city and as you can hear from all of the incredible housing organizers in the city, this is a uh, well uh, fought and won uh, success from all of their hard work on the ground. By mandating mediation between landlords and tenants in an easy and efficient forum before resorting to eviction, we provide a pathway towards resolution that prioritizes stability and fairness for all. This helps tenants remain in their homes and with a funded rental assistance TAF program, it also ensures that small mom and pop landlords who make up 70% of landlords in Philadelphia receive the rent they are owed, thereby preserving the integrity of our housing market and 
instead of having them sell their properties to commercial landlords, often who do not live in Philadelphia. In a city where poverty rates remain high, preserving this lifeline for vulnerable residents is not just a moral imperative, but also a sound economic investment in our collective future. Making the eviction diversion program a permanent fixture of Philadelphia's housing policy affirms our commitment to equity, justice, and compassion for all residents, especially those who are most vulnerable. Second, I was also very proud to introduce a resolution with my colleague Nick O'Rourke to take a look at ways that we can enhance and empower LNI uh, in their inspections of rental properties and look at our code enforcement process holistically to help both landlords and tenants by ensuring that rental housing is repaired and up to code and also pointing landlords in the direction of um, programs that can help them uh, subsidize this if needed. I want to thank my colleague Mike Driscoll, who's sponsoring this piece as well. As a, um, as a housing attorney, I've advocated and stood by so many Philadelphians harshly affected by landlords to address this very important issue, ensure that our neighborhoods are safe. And finally, just one piece, I want to thank my colleagues and advocates who spoke today calling for the U.S. Congress to extend the broadband discount program and supporting my resolution around affordable, the affordable connectivity program. As we learned during the pandemic, it is fundamentally important that our neighbors have access to high quality, affordable, and reliable internet. Today, approximately one in five Americans without home internet cite cost as a factor and 43% of adults with a household income under $30,000 do not have high-speed internet at home. Right here in the Commonwealth, the failure of the U.S. Congress will affect over 750,000 residents. So thank you to the members of the council who co-sponsored this resolution because this will affect our neighbors here in Philadelphia. Thank you. Good job. As there are no more speeches, the chair recognizes Councilmember Isaiah Thomas for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I move that council stands adjourned until next Thursday, April 11th at 10 a.m. It has been moved and properly seconded that council stand adjourned until Thursday, April 11th, 2024 at 10 a.m. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. And this meeting is adjourned.